Hi guys, uh, in this video we're going to be going over some sample calculations for the Rankin Cycle Lab. And for this video we're going to be going over lab session number four. Lab session four. Okay. So let's start off by doing a sketch of the system. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright. So a sample sketch would look something like this. So we have some box. And let's say this is our boiler. Boiler. And then that's going to lead to a throttling valve. And then that'll lead to a turbine. Let's do a turbine. And the turbine is going to be outputting to a generator. So let's draw a generator here. This is where our power is going to be converted. And lastly, we're going to take it to a condenser. Condenser. So let's put a C here. T for turbine, throttle valve, generator. Okay. Now here we're going to have, it's a boiler, so we're going to be adding heat, so this is going to be Q, N. And here is where the heat's going to be dissipated, so this would be Q out, and it's going to go out to the atmosphere. And this is where our power is generated. Okay, I think I think this is our basic sketch for the system. Okay, now for lab session four, they want us to do a system analysis. So they want us to use calculations. All right. So for lab session. All right. So for lab session four, they want us to do a system analysis. They want us to perform calculations using the first law energy energy conservation equation. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when writing the conservation equation, yes, uh, on one side you want to put everything that's going in. On the other side, you want to put everything that's going out. I like to write the entire thing and then cancel things out. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So let's do the boiler first. Let's start with the boiler boiler. All right. So stuff going in, I'm going to have Q boiler, Q boiler plus mass flow rate in times H in plus kinetic energy in plus potential energy in And this whole thing equals mass flow rate out times H out plus kinetic energy out plus potential energy out plus the work out. All right. And now from here, we just cancel out, we just cancel out everything. So in this one, there is no constant date pump. So we're going to cancel that out. That cancels this whole thing out. Um, and on the right hand side, we do not have kinetic energy. We do not have potential energy. And we do not have work out. Okay. So this leaves us with this equation. Q boiler. Boiler equals mass flow rate out times H out. Okay. And now from lab session three, we should have these two values. So let's plug those in. This is 28 pounds per hour. And this thing is 1193 BTU per pound. Okay, this cancels with that, 
and we're left with 33,404 BTU per hour. And that is, that is our Q boiler. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing for the turbine. Turbine. So same thing, I'm gonna put everything coming in on the left, everything going out on the right. So, we have Q of the turbine plus mass flow rate in times H in plus kinetic energy in plus potential energy. What's that? Potential energy in. And this whole thing is equal to mass flow rate out times H out plus kinetic energy out plus potential energy out plus the work of the turbine, which is what we're looking for. And in both these cases, we can eliminate kinetic energy and potential energy, and we can get rid of this Q. There's nothing, there's no heat going in, in the turbine. So let's rewrite this. So this equals mass flow rate in times H in, which is equal to mass flow rate out times H out, plus the work of the turbine. All right, and we also know that mass flow rate in is equal to mass flow rate out. Okay, so now rewriting this, we get work of the turbine is equal to mass flow rate, so it's equal to each other, you can just call it mass flow rate, H in minus H out. And now we just plug in our values and we get the work of the turbine. So let's see. Work of the turbine is equal to mass flow rate we already know is 28 pounds per hour. H in, I have it at 198. 198 BTM. So high. BTM, BTM, BTU, sorry, BTU per pound minus 1178 BTU per pound. And that cancels out with these. And I get work of the turbine is equal to Let's check. 560 BTU per hour. And that is a work rate of the turbine. Okay, now let me get rid of this. And now we are going to look at the generator. Generator. Okay. So we want to calculate the efficiency of the generator, and in order to do that, we first need to find the power generated. So to do that, we're going to multiply our voltage for current, which I have at 0 0.21 amps, with the voltage, which I have at 6.3 volts. And this gives me 1.32 watts. All right, and in order to calculate the efficiency, we need to convert the work of the turbine that we got from BTU per hour into watts. So let's do that next. So we got 560 BTU, BTU per hour. And we need to convert that into watts. So I have one watt per hour equals 3.414 BTU, all right? So this cancels with that, this cancels with that, and then we should be left with just watts. So I get 164 watts. Now I need to find the efficiency of the generator. This is the power output 
output over the power input power input the power output is this one and the power input is this one so let's do that 1.32 watts divided by 164 watts and this gives me an efficiency of 0 0.8 that's the efficiency of the generator. Okay, let me get rid of this. And now we are going to look at the condenser. Condenser. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write the energy equation. So we have Q, the condenser, plus mass flow rate in, times H in, plus kinetic energy in, plus potential energy in, in, and that should be equal to mass flow rate out, H out, plus kinetic energy out, plus potential energy out, plus the work of the condenser. Now here, we can eliminate kinetic energy, potential energy from both sides, and there is no work being done by the condenser, so we can get rid of that as well. Okay, this leaves us with Q of the condenser plus mass flow rate in times H in is equal to mass flow rate out times H out. And again, mass flow rate in equals mass flow rate out. So rewriting this, we get Q of the condenser is equal to mass flow rate H in minus H out. Okay. And now we simply plug in the numbers. So for mass flow rate, again, it's 28 pounds per hour. And for H in, I have 1178 BTU per pound. BTU per pound minus for H out I have 36.46 for 6 BTU per pound all right and this gives me a Q condenser equal to minus 31.963 BTU per hour. And it's negative because it's coming out, which is exactly what we should be saying. So that is the Q of the condenser. All right, now we're almost done. We just have to calculate the total efficiency of the system. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me get rid of this. Right now we're almost done. We just have to get the total system efficiency. It's the last part. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So for this we're gonna. So this is system, system, efficiency, efficiency. Okay. And this is simply the electrical. Electrical generator output, generator output over, that is a horrible line, over the energy input of the propane. So energy input, and this is given by the propane. All right, and we have already calculated both these, these numbers. This is 1.32 watts. What in the world did I write? One, two, three, two watts over 33,127 BTU per hour. And we're going to convert it to watts. And one watt per hour is equal to 3.414. BTU. All right, 
and then finally the system efficiency of the system is equal to 0.013 percent which is really low but that is correct yeah these these systems are not very efficient but that is the efficiency all right and i think we are done that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one